In this lesson, we are going to consider how to connect to the database. And basically, we are going to look on how to connect to the database and how to test if uh, the database has been connected. So without further ado, let us dive in and see how to do this. So let me just go back to my code again. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove the about page. We don't need this for now. Delete this guy. The next thing also is that if you go to the web.php, uh, now when I go to the browser and just check my code here or just load this page, if I go to the to the default route, it throws or rather it doesn't show anything because we haven't included this route to be part of the to be part of the route. As you can see, it tells me that nothing is found. So I'm going also to just add a route to cater for that like this and if someone goes to this default home page i also want to send him to the index page all right so that is enough for now and then so now uh this is where we come in contact with the env file the env file i know we haven't looked at this since we, the, we began this course uh but now the env file is in the root folder so you can just check in the root folder and you see the env so let me just explain some of the things here so that while we'll be using this guy we'll be able to know what exactly we're doing so in this env file this is where you set your variables or constants that you'll use in your in your in your application all right so for example we have the app name that you'll use you can just say this is a uh, the app name should be, for example, the Laravel course, all right? Then we have the environment. Of course, I'm using a local environment. If you are deploying this to production, you set this to production. And it maybe if you are deploying this to a test environment, you'll set this to test. We have the app key. The app key is just um, a unique identifier of the application that is usually auto-generated by the application. Then we have app debug. That means, do you, do you want to show errors while you are running this code? Of course, yes. While we are in the development mode, we want to make sure that we see all the errors. The app URL, uh, for now, you can set this to maybe the domain while you are working on a production environment. But our key interest is majorly this part of DB, all right? So in the start of this lesson, I did say that make sure you have installed ZAMP and you have installed MySQL and everything is working. If you did that, now if I go to localhost and just press enter in my browser while ZAMP is running, I started, it should bring up a page like this, all right? And then I can be able to access PHP my admin. So this is what we'll be basically using in this, in this course to manage all our databases, our tables, our schemas, all those things that pertain to database all right so this is my database and i'll be running here a couple of database commands i also presume that you have some basic knowledge of sql i'm going to create a database that will be using in our application so i'll just come here to the sql tab and then i'll create with the command create database and i just call this laravel underscore course all right so that is the name of our database and then i'll just press go so this will will create our database laravel course so if i go here now we have our database here and of course it is empty doesn't have anything so to connect our application to the laravel course database what i will need to do is just to go back again to my code to the env file and then you see this db section here db connection is of course my sql if you're using something like pg sql or whatever you can be able to indicate that the same here the host is our local host which the ip address is 127.0.0.1 and then the db port for mysql is 3306 database name that we have created is laravel course all right the username is route and I don't have any password in my case here. And then we have other things here that you don't need uh, to understand for now. This broadcast receiver and whatever. These are more advanced features. 
maybe in the later course we'll be able to use this mail section here to just set the functionalities for mail so that is enough for now once we have set our database detail here and the first thing i'm going to introduce you to again now is what we call migrations all right so migrations are simply a way on how to let me just open this folder again open this with a terminal like that so migration are just a way of uh, creating tables and interacting with the database easily while using the laravel all right if you can remember if i say php artisan and the way i can list this command was by saying list and this will list the artisan commands all right and so if i go to migration here you'll see that there are a number of commands here and if i check here you can see that i have this migrate refresh it drops all the table and rerun re, re all migration migration install create a migration repository migration refresh reset and rerun all migration migration reset roll back all database migration migration roll back roll the last database migration and then we have migration status shows the status of each migration so for example now we have created our database and in order to create a simple table let us just create a simple table the way you do this you say php artisan all right make migration all right so this migration will create a file that we can define the structure of our table so make migration and i'll call this table you need to say create and then you can say the name of your table in this case i'll just call this for now test uh create test and then you can add the name yeah but that is how you name your migration all right and then i just press enter so this will run and then you can see what will happen here migration created successfully and if i go back to our code now inside our inside our root folder we have this folder here database if i open this we have this folder inside the database folder known as migration we open it now there's something interesting here by default laravel comes with these four um, migration user user stable password reset field jobs and personal access token table so those are simply the tables or the migration to manage uh, authentication and authorization functionality in laravel so the one that we have created here is this test migration all right so let me just do this let me just okay like that so now when i open this migration uh, we are going to look at um, all the data types and these features of migration it has two methods the public up and the and the public public down methods all right it has two methods public up and public down and the public up is the method which is used by laravel to actually create the actual table and the public down is the method which is used by laravel to drop or to remove the the laravel table all right so behind the scene uh this migration will actually run the actual sql commands so in our case here for example we have our table test i can be able to add a column by default we have the id column and the timestamp column which adds or creates the id column and also creates the created art and the updated art column but i can able let us say to add a table you say table then let us say i want to add name and now this is where data types come in in this case name will be in the format of maybe a vaca which is simply a string all right and let us say this is the label name and maybe let us say i want to add something like uh, like maybe the the age all right so the age the age will be something like uh, maybe an integer all right so i'll just add like that and just say maybe the age and maybe say i'll add something like uh something like what let us say maybe something like height height will be something like a double all right that is how simply uh laravel helps you you know interact with the database you don't again have to write vaca integer and you know define all those things you simply write the data type and it will do everything behind the scene so this might be something like 
the height, all right? So in this case, I have said I, I want to create this table by running the migration, and I want this table to be with this ID string, uh, ID name, age, and height, and I've de defined the data types. And so to actually create this now, this table in the database, I'll just come and say PHP artisan migrate. So this command will run all the migration that are in your file and create all the tables that are required by your file, all right? Is the command that actually creates all the table which are in your application. If I do that and press enter, what this will do is that it will it will create all the tables that we have in our application. As you can see, we have done, 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 done. And so far in our in our application, we had all these tables. Users table, password reset table, failed jobs, migration, personal access, uh, migration and test. So expect to see around one, two, three, four, five, five tables. So if I go back again to my database and just do a refresh here in our DB now. So now if I open my database here, as you can see now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I open my test table that I just created, you can actually see that we have um, that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six column created at and updated at for the timestamp ID, also for the ID that were default in the migration. But I did add the name, the age. And the height. Uh, this is enough for now. In the next lesson, we are going to look at the data types for the migration and how to just manipulate the migration and how to interact with some of the migration commands. Hello, guys, welcome back. And in this lesson, I want us to consider some of the migration commands and the data types that you can use while creating these tables. All right. So let us go back to our code here. So far, we had created a table here, the test table, and I told you that this app uh, method is used to create the migration, and this one is used to drop the migration. Some of the commands that you can use while uh, performing migration, as you have seen, of course, the first one, as you have seen, is the migrate, which will create uh, the migration that you have created. Then we have the command uh, refresh, all right? As if I go back here in these commands here, if you look at the command refresh, it reset and reruns all migration. All right. In other words, it will remove data from the migration or data from the table and create a new whole table. All right. So if you if you have data, of course, in your database or in your table, you will lose those data. Let me just give you an example here. You see. So if I go to my DB here. Uh, let me just create some demi data here very fast in the test table. So ID one name, let us call this test age, let us put 24 height, let us put 24.7 created at, let us pick a date here and just say maybe today, something like that sort. Here again, let us pick 17th and let us just say go. And then let us add one more record. So let me just go back to insert and let us add one more record here. So I'm going to put here for here test two or whatever. I'm going to put the age maybe to 45 here to maybe 45.5. And here maybe let us just pick another demi time here. And here also another demi time and make this maybe something of that sort. Let us add this data. All right. So that is fine for now. And if I go back and just browse, we should have two records. As you can see, we have two records in our database. But now if I run this command, if I say, OK, so if I run PHP artisan um, migrate, not refresh, migrate refresh. What it will do is that it will drop all the migration. All right and be able to create a new one. So as you can see, uh, reset and rerun all migration. So reset is to drop everything and then rerun afresh. So I'll just do that. So as you can see, 
it it gives me here some info telling me that it is rolling back so rolling back is like uh, removing and now if i go back again and just refresh my database i should have like empty tables by the way you should be very careful when running this command and you ought not to run such a command in the production environment so as you can see we have lost all our data and then we have another command here migration rollback rollback the last database um migration so what the migration rollback does is that it will drop the last migration that you created so when i run this command this command rollback it will remove the last uh, set of migration that i did and in this case of course i did migrate all these tables so all this table will be removed in our database so as you can see now when i go to our database i have nothing here okay i have nothing in our database here so what i'm going to do is that let me just migrate again just to return our tables that we have lost them so it will run the migration again and now we have our migration or our tables in the database so the other method is the fresh method which also will do nearly the same thing as the refresh method it will also drop all the tables and just create again all the all the tables that uh, were there so for example now we have run the migration and now we should have the we should have the tables here so as you can see we have all the tables so again if i go here and just run php artisan migrate and in this case instead of refresh i just say fresh so this will do the same thing it will drop the tables as you can see it tells us here that i'm dropping all the tables and then creating migration table so it will drop all the tables and also uh, create again all the tables and so another command that you can be able to use is the schema dump which will simply dump uh, like a command that will help you maybe to do what to execute you know sql command that you can execute and so the way you do this you just say php php artisan and this is migrate not migrate should be schema schema and then dump all right so okay this should be schema dump yeah all right so schema dump is another command that will be able to generate like uh like commands for your migration right and now if you go inside the database folder you should be able to see the schema folder here and when you click on the file that it has created mysql schema.sql you can see that this is just a raw sql file with commands to run and these commands are uh, all commands that are in your migration. So that is how you can be able to generate again SQL command if you want to from your code. Let me just delete this. I don't need this guy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is that uh, when you go back here to a migration test, I told you that we have quite a number of data data types. So we have seen string, for example, name, integer, double. We can also have something like uh, you know something like date and date you can have something like you know maybe birthday i don't know something like of that sort then we can have something maybe like uh something like date time all right this will pass the date and the time all right the date time and this can be maybe you know arrival time arrival time we can also have something like uh, maybe uh, maybe JSON. Of course, JSON can be something maybe, let us say in the case whereby you're creating an LMS and you're passing answers to a question, you can pass them in format of a JSON. We also have something like, uh, let us say something like, uh, let me just look here, the most important one, a uh, text, all right? Maybe you want to pass a description of something, you can use something like text. So you can say here yeah, maybe description. And maybe you can also have something like a long text. We have also long text. 
where maybe you can pass something, maybe like a small blog, I don't know, a small blog. So this just to tease you and help you just to, you know, to get acquainted with this stuff. But you can be able to use any type of the data type that you want here. And pretty much Laravel accommodates all these data types that you want, all right? So let me just run this migration is what it will give us here. If we are to send migrate, all right? Uh, so let us run the migration and just see nothing, nothing to migrate, all right? So let me just, okay, what I've done is that I did already migrated the tables, but I haven't added a new migration, all right? And so what happens here is that even though I've modified this table test, it tells me that I have nothing to migrate. So the way I can be able to avoid, you know, again, running this migration and dropping all the tables that I've created, I can just drop the last table and run the last table. And I can be able to do this by running php artisan. And I can say rollback, as you can remember, which will drop the tables. But I'll now use this guy by the name step. All right. And I'll put step equals one. And this means that just drop the last migration, all right? Or the last migration that you are able to run. Okay, okay, I'm getting here an error. Let me just cancel this and say, uh, oh, let me just run this again. This should be my grade roll back like that. Okay, as you can see now, it has just dropped one migration and which was our last table that we did modify. So that is how you can be able to drop a single table or a specific table that you are you have modified or the latest table that you have modified. So now I can run migrate and it will migrate this table again with the changes that I've that I've just added. All right. So all right, as you can see, it has just migrated this table. So again, if I go to my database now and do a refresh here. So now if I open the test table here. We should have all these columns that we have added. So I hope you have been able to see how to create the database table, how to interact and how to create migration. And your homework for this uh, lesson will be go check out the data types. Try also to check out the database uh, commands and just play around with these commands. Find out how they work, interact with them, in what cases you'll, you'll use them, and then you'll be good for our next lesson where now we'll be able to interact with the models, the database, and the controllers.